everyone, and welcome to Holy Spirit Soapbox. I'm your host, Dan. We wanted to thank you for supporting us. We see a lot of people coming in with prayer requests and contact us submissions and feedback and all these wonderful things. And we want to thank you for subscribing to our website, following us on different platforms. We ask that you continue to spread the word uh, so that we can spread the word of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, we are going to talk about weapons. No, not firearms. No, not knives. No, not explosives. <laughs> so don't shut us off yet. We're actually going to talk about using the Bible as a weapon. So you might have heard in the past, if you keep this up, you're going to hell. Or God hates blank. Insert here. Right? Or maybe you've heard, we need to do good. So when we're at the pearly gates, we'll get into heaven. So today's episode is called Weapon of Choice the Bible. You know, being a Christ follower in biblical times versus the 21st century has changed drastically, right? His disciples sat and ate with Jesus, Jesus' disciples, or with those who knew Jesus well, you know, the apostles or whomever, all the disciples that used to follow him. Then they learned through different stories, written and unwritten, that this was God in the flesh who loved the world so much that he gave up his life for all people. His guidance to all his followers is love one another as I have loved you. Now, fast forward hundreds and hundreds of years, and people have started to condemn and demonize individuals for their outward sin. You know, how does this reflect for us to love others and show how Jesus has loved us? Seriously, where did we go wrong? Where did we go wrong? It's really hard to say for sure, but we often point at the actions of people with like a really stern finger, right? Honestly, evil from the church sprouts from us saying, God allows us or me to have free will to find him, but I don't allow you to have free will to find him. You know, many non-believers that I have had discussions with actually grew up in a Christian household. Some of them knew the Ten Commandments, you know, one through ten, top to bottom, and could recite the Lord's Prayer without hesitation. You know, the Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, that prayer. But they understood these as rules for engagement with others. They went on to describe their relationship with their parents or friends and or family as, as such. If you do these things, you're a good person. But... If you don't, you're a bad person and would be punished, if not on earth, an eternal fire because God hates a bad person. And guess what? I, too, was a victim of this belief. And whether or not I believe in that now or if you believe in that now, we have to ask ourselves, are we causing others to believe in that? Are we causing others to believe that you have to do more good than bad? We have to ask ourselves also, does this align with even what Jesus said in John 15, 12, which is love others as I have loved you? If you love someone, do you condemn them and make them feel inadequate, not valuable, or dehumanized? Do you assure them that they're going to burn in hell forever as a consequence for their actions? Or better yet, would you want our almighty God to strike down these individuals to make our lives better? I mean, I really hope your answers are no. Mine are. Mine are no for all of those. You know, because over the years, we've decided to incorporate weaponizing God into everyday life for our gain, our own gain. You know, whether it's parents trying to get their children to act nicely or us to create a better society based on fear of safety, Our techniques to control may be evil in itself. Essentially, you must give up your wants for my wants, as it says so in the Bible. Do these things or else. It tells me to point out your flaws in Matthew 18, 15, saying, if your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault, just between the two of you. If they listen to you, you have won them over. So here I am. I'm trying to tell you what you're doing wrong. But is it right? I want to say no because the Bible states, no, this is not right. This type of vigilance, I guess if you'd call it, has effectively driven people away from God. 
to the point that they now view Christianity, God, and the Bible as ammunition against their lives. This is all just a set of rules now in place to condemn them in a perceived effort to make the world a better place, right? Fortunately, fortunately, this fake foundational idea of God being an old man on a cloud shooting lightning bolts at people is of sand and it does crumble easily. If we go about it the right way, of course, if somebody is stuck in sin, talk to them about it. But going around saying God hates you because you do this or God hates this individual or these types of people because they do that is incorrect. What happened to setting a foundation on our rock, Jesus, by getting to know our Lord and Savior first, then loving others as he loved us to show who God is? What happened to that? You know, Jesus' teaching should not be a weapon to point fingers at each other but an understanding of where we fall short to uncover the real value of Jesus' death and resurrection. We should be wanting to live like Jesus did, trying to be spotless and sinless and blameless so that we can show people who God is. If you're walking around thinking that you're perfect, well, I hate to tell you, but the Bible says you ain't. Sorry, Romans 3.23, we all fall short, as I just mentioned, and as Paul mentions in Romans. So we can't go around saying, you're wrong and going to hell. We have to sit back and understand where we fall short and change that, and then live as Jesus did and serve other people. Now, if you're a non-believer listening in today, I want you to know that You can throw out, throw it all out. That whole do good and you make it to heaven, do bad and you don't. And God is this angry man on top of a cloud shooting lightning bolts every time you do something wrong. And he enjoys to do that. Throw it out. It's not true. We as Christ followers would do our best, right? To live as Christ did. And then we can help you understand who God really is. So, Whether you're a believer or non-believer, here's some verses I love to meditate on. The verses are Matthew chapter 7, verses 3 through 5, and chapter 7, verses 24 to 27, John chapter 15, verse 12, James chapter 3, verse 2, and 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 15 through 17. Now, these are going to be put in the description of the episode as well, and in our website under the episode HolySpiritSoapbox.com is our website. We encourage you to go there, subscribe, drop us a note, ask for prayers, etc. We love to hear from you. And finally, there's some questions I'd like to ask to deepen your relationship with God or if you're a non-believer, get back into a relationship with God. So the questions are as follows. Number one, what role does the Bible play for you in your life? Is it a big book of rules or is it all about God's love? What does it really mean for you? Question two, has there ever been a time in your life where you might have used the Bible as a weapon to condemn others, possibly driving them away from Christ? Maybe you're a non-believer and you've used verses against Christians or vice versa. And finally, How can we love others as Jesus has loved us? What does the Bible say about that? So once again, I wanted to thank you for joining in today. You are a blessing to us, and we really hope that you are getting blessed by these episodes. I really hope to see you next time, and I hope you have a wonderful day or wonderful night wherever you are in the world. Let's close out in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, please let us love others the way you love us. We want to show mercy and grace as you have shown us by sending your only son, Jesus the Christ, down to die for all of us. Help us to not dehumanize others, but show others what your love really looks like by continuing to get closer to you and walk in the footsteps of Jesus, caring for others and guiding others back to you with true love. 
We appreciate you always giving us the opportunity to have a deeper relationship with you every day and pray these things in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen. 